Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're going to revisit, and see how I'm going to make some changes. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to revisit an older sheet load of cards and sometimes change it up, sometimes just stick to the original plan. Well, today I'm going to be tweaking it just a little bit. This month, we're going to be rewinding back to October of 2020. This originally yielded eight cards using two 12 by 12 pattern papers. But here in just a minute, you'll see when I show you my supplies, I'm going to use a single piece of double sided 12 by 12 pattern paper. Now we will only yield four cards, but I am going to make them a little bit special by using clear card bases. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download this sheet load of cards for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download this free printable if you're a subscriber to my channel. Now let's take a quick look at the supplies I'll be using before we get started. For my sentiment, since I'm going to make kind of winter or holiday cards, I got out this set of stamps that I got during a virtual Stamp Joy with Tailored Expressions, and there is one that says Seasons Greetings. I just felt like that could cover a whole lot of occasions. This sheet load originally called for two different pieces of cardstock. For CS1, you would get eight pieces out of it. Well, we're going to make an inner card, so we're going to get four cards that we're going to fold down. So you do still need a full sheet for that. And then for CS2, you could easily use a half sheet or use up some scraps you might have for that piece. Because again, we don't need to yield eight here. We only need to yield four. For my square mats or for CS2, I got out kind of this evergreen cardstock here. For CS1, which will be my inner cards, I got out one piece of craft card stock. And then of course, because I'm making clear cards, I got out some clear card stock. I got out two sheets of that, which will be cut and folded to two card bases. Now, if you've never been to my channel for a clear card set before, I do have a special clear card Q&A video, which I will link in that description box below. It answers lots of questions and gives lots of tips. So I hope you'll check that out and maybe make a clear card set of your own. And finally, the paper I'm going to use. Like I mentioned before, it is double sided. On the front, you have kind of that winter scene with the church and the houses. And then, it's, I know you probably can't see it on camera, but this house here is kind of like a bluish green with a texture. And that is going to be that same pattern that's on the back. So when I make my cards later, I'll just flip them back and forth for each of the cards. This is from Photo Play Papers. It's a wonderful Christmas line, and this piece is Christmas Cottage. As I add more products and tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna get started by cutting my single piece of pattern paper per the original instructions. Now, because my piece has the branding strip at the bottom, I do need to cut that off before I get started. Now, one thing you'll want to keep in mind, if your pattern paper has a certain orientation, you'll want to make sure you know what that is for both sides before you make the first cut. For me, I'm going to cut two strips that are four inches wide, and then that final strip I cut at two and a quarter inches wide. Now, there are some leftover pattern paper pieces on this, and you could use those for a project later. 
The skinny strip gets cut into four squares that are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And then the wider strips, we're gonna cut those to five and a quarter inches tall. Here's a look at the eight pieces you'll get when you've cut down your piece of pattern paper. Next, I brought in one piece of craft cardstock for CS1. Now, instead of cutting this into eight pieces that are two and three quarters by four, I'm going to cut it into eight pieces that are two and three quarters by eight. Now, I started by cutting these into two and three quarter inch wide sections, but I should have cut it to eight inches tall first because now I had to go back in and make four cuts to get it down to eight instead of that just one single one. So learn from my error. For CS2, you need to end up with four pieces that are two and a half inch squares. Now this would be a great one for scraps, but unfortunately I didn't have any scraps of this green color I use. So I'm just gonna cut a two and a half inch strip on the 11 inch side and then cut that down into four pieces that are two and a half inches tall. And finally, I'm gonna bring in my two pieces of clear cardstock and I cut these in half to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. Now for these, I do just go ahead and fold by hand and I do make sure to give that folded edge a nice crease. Once you're done putting clear cards together, you wanna go ahead and reinforce that fold again as well because you will have to open it to be able to get anything on the inside. But I just wanted to show you quickly how easy the card bases are to make. Although I didn't use a scoring tool for my card bases this time, I did go ahead and bring in my score buddy for my CS1 pieces. I put a score at the four inch mark on these. I usually do a couple and make them kind of lighter. And then I brought in the bone folder to reinforce that. I did the same with the remaining three pieces. Now it's time to get the sentiment stamped. To do this, I brought in my mini Misty, the stamp set that I'll be using, and my Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus ink. I thought that color went well with the green cardstock and the green from the pattern paper. Now because the stamp is rubber and I cannot see through it, I placed a piece of clear cardstock over one of the card bases, and then I'm going to do a little test run. Now you'll see I brought in the green square so I kind of knew how far up I could place my sentiment. And once I had it where I thought it would be good, I inked it up and gave it a test run and it was, I had gotten it pretty straight across there. So all I had to do was remove that piece of clear cardstock and then stamp the three inner card bases. Now that piece of clear cardstock will clean off easily. I just used my stamp chamois on that as well. I brought back in my pattern paper and my cardstock squares and I adhered the four sets together, just trying to get a nice even border all the way around. Then I brought in my clear card bases and the larger pieces of pattern paper and I placed one on the inside of each. This way you can still see that pattern paper from the front since it's a clear card base. I do find it easy to bring in just a scrap of white paper, in this case it's the back of my sheet load of cards print, to help me see the edges of the clear cardstock. I try to get it lined up so it's even on those bottom three corners, and then when it is, I'll press it down firmly. Because once you adhere stuff, especially with a tape runner, to clear cardstock, it is hard to pull it back up. Now it's time to get those inner cards added. To do this, adhesive goes on the back, and then I center it on that piece of pattern paper on the inside of the card. This again, you can still see from the front, but because it's folded, it is going to hide your personal message to the recipient. While I add the rest of those, I thought this would be a great time for the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to put out there from time to time to get to know you a little bit better. Today's question has to do with clear cards. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple. I would just like to know, have you ever made clear cards before, like I am here with using a clear card base? I would love for you to answer that in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your answer so I know that you want me to see it. 
Now obviously for me, you know that I love to make clear cards and I'm making some right now. I can't wait to see your answers. Now back to the process. It is time to add the squares and these will actually go on the front of the clear card base. Now you'll see here I messed up and I added the same patterns to the front. You actually want to have the opposite. And like I mentioned before, it's kind of hard to peel it up when you put stuff down. But I was able to remove it and switch it to the opposite card base so you'll see one here. I just love how you get all of those layers but not much bulk because you have the stuff on the front of the card and on the inside. I did my best to remove the adhesive from that first card base I tried and then I added the correct pattern. And here's a look at the two cards you'll get from these and I just went ahead and I made the other two. Now one thing I get asked a lot is how I hide the adhesive on the back of my cards when I make clear ones but actually I don't worry about it. I figure not many people are turning it over to see the back to see how you put the card together but if that is something that bothers you, you could always add cardstock to the back of the cards to hide that. Off camera, I cut two white snowflakes from this Spellbinder set. I just thought that the pieces where the blue striped pattern paper was on the front were a little bit plain. So I wanted to bring in a little bit more pattern and I adhered these snowflakes to the front just so they kind of hang off the left of that square. I just used my art glitter glue in a fine tip bottle and I gave these about five minutes to dry. And here's a look at the four finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this little sheet load rewind. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. As always, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you click on the download link. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you sign up for a mailing list or send me proof. So please make sure before you click on the file, you have already clicked on that subscribe button. Down at the very bottom of my description box below is a link to the October 2020 PDF. You can view it on screen and use it from there, or you can download it to your device and print it. Below the link, it does say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. Don't forget if you're going to create with it and share online to use the hashtags or you can always send one in for the end of the month video. My P.O. box as well as the show us your sheet load guidelines video is linked in that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.